Episodes 71 to 74. This is going to be a much more exciting one. We have got the other half of the base. That's cool. We can get that done out of the way. But more importantly, we've got some chest stuff. We are starting to build the upper body. Um, and that excites me because we're going to be able to build the arc reactor into everything and, and everything's going to kind of congregate and congeal into something a bit more, a bit more whole. It's exciting. Let's get into it. Let's do number 71 first and foremost with a ball joint and the other half of the base. That one should, that one should be a quick, simple scoot through. Um, oh no, actually there's, there's a few few extra bits, but anyway, let's, let's dive into this one and uh, see what's what. Magazine 71, uh, there's actually quite a bit in here. It's not just the base, as I thought. So we've got um, bearing ring for the hips which are, um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need some bits from one of the others. Uh, is it this bit? Is it this bit? Yes, it's this bit. Ha ha. That's where that comes in. This bit from the, uh, this, which you may remember from an earlier episode. And take the bearing ring for the left hip marked with an L which it isn't. That's marked with an R. That's interesting. So where's the other one? There's only one in there. Hmm. I'll be right back. It'd help if I got the right part. Um, yes, this is obviously, these are both for the legs, clearly. And I've gotten the wrong part. And it's this one that I want, which is obviously the L one. How foolish of me. Okay, so, marked with an L. Are we marked with an L? We are marked with an L. All right. So we take this, we take one of these. Are these the same, 71D? Are these marked L and R? I'm not seeing a marking on them. They look identical. Um, so I will assume that they are indeed identical. So let's zoom in so you can see what's going on. So we need this piece we need to feed this piece through here and we need to fasten this onto here is that the same both ways? I think it is. It is indeed. So we just pop that on there and we're going to need two screws which are LP screws. Uh, we have a bunch of those so clearly there's going to be a lot of screw in here with these screws. A uh, lot of parts. Uh, how many do we have? Let's take a look. So we'll put one back in the packet because we know That'll be the extra one. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Wow. Dang. That's a lot. So let's whack some of these puppies in. Come on. Come on now. Now obviously we're going to repeat that with the second one that's supplied in here and I suspect the other screws are going to be for connecting the parts for the base together uh, but that's just a guess at the moment but uh, I'm thinking it's quite likely and that would explain why we need a lot of them. Alright, so that's that bit. Clearly that bit is going to go onto that, or is it? Hmm. Possibly. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's that bit, uh, which, and I would assume that that bit will go onto there afterwards and screw onto that. Uh, but that's just a bit of a guess just now. I'm not 100% sure. So we'll pop that aside. 
quick check and repeat the process on the other side. So I will be back momentarily. And we're back with this big fella. So um, as you can see, two halves form together, make a nice little Iron Man logo. We'll flip that over and we have got, uh, oh, just, just to show you that, but of course we've got the two, the two plates with the ball joints there, um, equally matching. We've got four posts and we have got two clips. The clips simply slot onto these and slide down and just help to hold that together nicely. And then presumably these posts, I'm assuming go like this, looks like, and give us some extra feet for it to stand on. Nice, I like that, pretty good. So we've got a nice um, flat area of base for it all to stand on. And then I'm guessing that Yep, uh, these just screw into here like so. All very straightforward. And it should pull it all into perfect alignment. I still seem to have a couple of extra screws for some strange reason, but we'll uh, figure out why that is in a moment. Maybe they added extra, extra ones in this magazine, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. So that's those in. Flip that over. That's quite nicely joined together. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Not a perfect join, but you know, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so why have I got three additional screws? Let's have a look to see if I've missed anything in the magazine. So, got eight screws in there, assembly of the base, the hip ball joints, which two screws in each of those. Yeah, they must have just. Um, added because I've actually got five spare screws here so they um, yeah they must have uh, thrown in a lot of extra screws for some bizarre reason hmm how strange how strange that's fine as long as I've not missed any that's all good so that's magazine number 71 done and out of the way we'll put these surplus screws back into the packet and these all go into a little spares uh, thing at the uh, end of the build just in case I damage any or need any and this has happened a couple of times I've actually stripped the heads of a couple and um, one of them I snapped um, fitting apart together so it is it is quite handy to have those but that makes actually makes for a really solid nice solid base and that's good because let me tell you there are some really really heavy parts in this month's edition of the magazine uh, some really heavy metal parts so we are most certainly going to need um, a good solid sturdy base so let's move on to magazine 72 in magazine 72 we have got the support mast um, we've got some stickers we've got some screws we've got a reactor mast that I'm assuming is the tray that the reactor goes into so let's get the box up here so let's look at what we've got we've got this metal solid chunky metal body part that's nice some nice heft to that we've got these support rods which obviously fit onto the base to help support the armor and they are heavy let me tell you that's keyed 
so it only slots in in one way one direction and uh, we've got a plastic thing there we've got a plastic pin there and we've got a plastic um, arc reactor do from a thingamabob thing which clearly fits somehow into the back of here Aha, yes yes I see how you fit like so and this is where the arc reactor slides in nice and this is in fact the first part that we fit so let's crack straight on with it and oops, I'm not sure where that sticker goes at the moment we will find out so I'm going to zoom in so we can see what's happening and we need two 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 em screws we have a packet with three so clearly they they are the only two that we need so keep hold of one empty two out come on and my battery is going flat on this camera so i'm going to try and get this done just before the camera dies if i can come on now oh in you go i really want to get a battery pack for this one um because this is the one that i'm using for the sort of wider stuff like like this where the uh, the other camera I use for the watch work is I want to sort of leave dedicated for that without having to change it up all the time. So let's fasten that into there. That's into there. Get those nipped up nice and tight. Excellent. And that gives us the chest piece with the slot for the arc reactor. Right, moving on with this, now I've got the battery charged back up again. We've got these parts here, which I will zoom in on. So we've got the long stick-like one and this piece here. It has a little recess on one side and it's flat on the other. It needs to slide over with the recess on this side. Uh, sorry, the recess is in the screw holes, that is. Um, on this side, this then screws to the back of the arc reactor and this provides your pressy uh, feature for the button which is on the back of the chest arc reactor. Um, so for this we will need two IP screws I think, yep, two IP screws. We have got three in the packet of course. So we'll pop those out. can see that's quite flappy and loose and I'm assuming that this will protrude from either from the back piece or connect to something else in the back piece. Um, let me dig out. Oops. Dig out the arc reactor and just going to have a bit of a test fit. You can see that's the button for the arc reactor on the back um, which slots in that way around and yeah you can see that sort of stiffens it up a little bit and presumably this will be held in place now I did wonder about this and I thought uh, that maybe it would be left so that you could just pop it out switch it on pop it back in and uh, so same to switch it off but um, I'm assuming that this is now going to be locked in place because we've got this here but it will be done in such a way I'm guessing that means um, you'll still be able to remove it easily enough to change the battery but you can see with that switch there we can light the arc reactor on and off very cool uh, so that completes the chest bit for the moment the next bit to do 
is the uh, let's, let's lay that face down there a moment. The next bit is is this metal rod. Um, the two pieces. Oops, let's uh, zoom back out a bit. The two pieces of this rod are held together with pins. I've already put one in uh, because I wanted to see how tricky that would be, as it were. And it is very tight. I actually had to use a hammer on this one. So I'm going to see how this one goes. And using the back of the screwdriver, just sort of press that in as best I can. And much like the other one, there's a bit protruding, so I will need a hammer. There we go. So bear in mind, you might well need a hammer for the, this part of the assembly. And the next part is to put a bit of this shiny tape, which is very, very thin, shiny film around the base, which I've already done. And I've already tried a, a test fit. And you can see here, if I zoom in for you, that um, it ripped half of it off when I pushed it into the base. So it might well be that you don't actually need that on your base. So give that a try first. You might, it might fit without the need of the tape to help secure it, which I'm assuming is the purpose of it. But that fits into there like so, and gives you the base with the support rod. that the clamp fits to which holds your figure. So that's that bit done. So I'm gonna pop that down there. And that I believe is the end of magazine number 72. So we'll close that and we'll go to magazine 73. And this one contains some more of the chest pieces and the clamp, the actual clamp that holds the armour onto the stand. So in magazine 73 we have got uh, these bits which form part of the, um, uh, which form the neck piece for the chest armour. And we've got uh, these which are very sturdy metal pieces which form the clamp that holds the body and the upright post is also a metal one as well nice and solid which is uh, is really good to see it's nice uh, okay so we've got uh, GM IP and KM screws and we've got some foam pads which stick to the inside of this which prevent the paint from getting scratched which is a nice nice little touch so the first thing we need to do is we take these silver pieces here let's zoom down for you so we take the chest piece and these silver pieces and get them the right way around and these fit like so and these will attach at the back with screws, yeah, two IP screws. A whole bunch of them again, so I'm just gonna throw all but one out, working on the assumption that we will use all but one. Uh, okay, let's try that again without throwing that all over the place. There we go. Fantastic. Nice and simple little pieces of trim, but they, they add a nice bit of detail. And these are the pieces that are actually visible underneath the helmet and sort of behind the chest plate armour. And uh, quite strikingly so, because they are 
a silver colour compared to the red and gold of the suit. So that's that bit. Next bit is the red neck piece and of course that just clips onto here like so. Has locating pins either side and I'm assuming we use IP screws again to connect this one. We certainly do. Two IP screws. Excellent. Definitely need to remagnetize this screwdriver. There we go. So that gives us the neck piece. I'm assuming we then connect this. We do indeed, yes. We connect this to the body with more IP screws. So this fits, let's zoom back up a little bit now so you can see the whole thing. So this fits on the upper part, of course, into this little recess here, I believe. How does that fit? Let's have a look. Did I fasten that too, too soon? Hmm. Oh no, it's got tiny little holes down here, which I didn't spot before. Um, and that's where the screws bite into. Okay. That looks quite nice, I think. So we need another couple of these screws. And oops. This is going to actually go in. Interesting. It looks like the holes for these have not been drilled particularly well. Hmm. Wonder if I go on slightly sharper. Actually, let's try the other. The other screw hole. Okay, one's going in. That's an interesting one because that was not particularly well drilled out. Let's try that again. No, I'm going to have to get um, a little pin vise and a drill to uh, to just get that. To, to get that moving because that is not wanting to play so I will be back momentarily. So I managed to get that one in. Uh, essentially I loosened this one off, did a bit of jiggling around. I was going to just uh, drill it through but uh, it was just slightly misaligned. The hole was there, it just the, neither one of them was drilled particularly well. So that's something to check on yours. Just uh, double check and make sure. Perhaps thread a screw through the hole first before fitting it onto the body to, um, to make sure that it's, there's something for it to bite into when you get around to fitting it. So let's move uh, these bits out of the way. So obviously this is going to be next. So we'll scoot back up a little. We'll flip over the page. And the next thing that we're going to do is put the sticky, 
the stickies onto the uh, the clamp. So. Let's have a look. Let's get one of these peeled. If it's going to play. Um, just going back to the screws, it looks like we've actually got two spare screws in that one, the IP ones, so and I have double checked and made sure I've not missed any, uh, not missed any off. So, a trusty old Swiss army knife to separate the sticky from the foam pad and Let's stick this on to here. As mentioned, this is obviously just to stop the, uh, or prevent the risk of the paint being scratched, which uh, is quite a nice little touch. And obviously being a spring clip design, it's quite nicely designed for uh, to enable you to, to get the figure in and out for uh, those times when you need to play with, uh, I mean, when you need to uh, repose the sculpture for um, aesthetic purposes and enjoyment. <laughs> um, yes, so what's next? So sticky pads done spring springy thing nice and easy you've got the uh, let's zoom in again for you so you can see the spring shaped like so and we've got cutouts that just slots into there and obviously that one slots into there and when they line up there's your little springy outy lever smashing now we need a screw to hold these together we need a gm screw a gm screw so we'll put that whoops we'll put that ip one back gm nice uh, metal screw with a washer type head Fantastic. And zooming back out a little bit, you can see we've got a nice C clamp type thing, which is clearly going to be able to clamp around the body like so. And then we attach it into the metal post at the one, two, three, four. The fourth and third hole down on these points respectively. It seems and obviously there's lots of holes. Uh, let's zoom back out so you can see what's going on there. There's lots of holes on that pole and that means you can fine-tune that and tweak it up and down and I'm assuming we need two KM screws because they're the ones remaining we've got three in the packet it certainly looks that way so hoping that doesn't fall off in the meantime and break the plastic base let's get a couple of these fantastic okay Excellent.
that seems awfully high up maybe it grips it just underneath the arms I'm sure we will find out soon enough and of course the good thing is it's, it's going to be very easy to, to just unscrew that and move them if need be that's nice so the whole thing uh, with the exception of the base which of course is plastic this whole thing is metal and very very sturdy and strong very pleased with that that can go down there fantastic um, and I think we're done for this one so we've got this chest piece like so and I know the next episode uh, which will be the final one of this um, this bundle has got some more trim pieces for the chest so what's that one crop top armor hmm. for the final part we've got the some more dressy up pieces for the chest plate and IP screws and uh, that's that's all that's in this one so we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, one, five IP screws which means of course that um, that all but one of these is being used so we'll throw that one to the side we take the armor and it fits on this whoops fits on this way around and you can see we've got these locating pieces which fit into these locating holes so that should just slide into place I think he says Oh, there's one. Yes, there we go. Fantastic. And then, of course, four screws holding it in at the back. So, fantastic. And there we go. and that's the front chest plate really nicely dressed up i like that that looks very very good and of course the arc reactor inside there and yeah yeah that's nice and again again a bit more idea of the actual scale of this figure this is this is just the upper breastplate this is before you've got the sort of middle section for the um the abs and then the the actual waist bit which is going to be down here. I mean, it's this thing is, is just going to be so big. It's so cool. It's so cool. Fantastic. Stay there. Okay. Oh, stay there. No, I really don't like that laying on that at all. No, nope. I'm going to have to lay it front down for the moment, which I'm not happy about, but it'll have to do. All right. So let's do the magazine thing. So magazine 71, let's zoom in a smidgen for you. Here we go. Industrial revolution, the future of a neighborhood. Um, and it seems that uh, over the years, Tony Stark has had an incredible array of, uh, of story arcs. It really does. So many, many more than we're aware of in, obviously, uh, us folks that are sort of coming to it from a movie fan point of view. Obviously, I was aware of the comics as a kid, but I wasn't really a huge comic book fan, to be honest. Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. Uh, some general stuff about Doctor Strange. God Killer 2, obviously another armor, fighting galactic gods. Here we go. Uh -huh. And then 
We've got a pretty cool looking armor on the front of this one on episode 72. I don't know, don't know what this is, but uh, I quite like the look of that one. Iron Man Noir, The Age of Adventure. It's 1939. Hmm. Okay. Some very funky looking armors here. Um, a bit punishery looking, that one. Yeah, I like that one. Iron Man and James Rhodes, who is wearing armor JRXL1000, reach Baron Zemo's castle from Iron Man Noir 3. Right, oh, Baron Zemo, well, we know Zemo from the movies, of course, but obviously I'm assuming Zemo in the um, in the comic book arcs was slightly different. Presumably all part of Hydra during the war, maybe, with it being 1939. Thor, Goddess of Thunder. Uh -huh. And Submarine 4 armor, target Namor. Interesting. Um, okay. Very, very strange. Okay, so um, there's, I presume, I always thought Namor was a good guy. Maybe this was something, I don't know, obviously some story arc to do where, where they were fighting him for some reason. And presumably um, in a submarine environment, which uh, clearly he would have the advantage in. And then we've got Magazine 73, cool artwork of Spider-Man and Iron Man on the cover. Godbuster armor. Carnage Returns 2 against the Symbiote. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so Spider-Man and Venom seemingly battled Carnage. That's interesting. I like that. I like the idea of that. That sounds kind of cool. Symbiote on the loose. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Very cool armor with big, huge blasters. Nice. Dr. Tannis Neves. Doesn't need much time to manipulate her symbiota to understand the concept of absorption. Okay, there we go. The Builder Bits, of course. The Avengers, 60 glorious years. And then we've got some old artwork and various artworks of uh, cover arts that have appeared over the years. Avengers assemble again and again and more bits of cover art and very cool artwork. And then Godbuster Iron Man Reloaded. Righty. Hmm. I wonder how many armors there's been. I wonder if there's a, a compilation somewhere of, of every every armor uh, variant that Tony Stark's made. There must be a list somewhere. Of course, we got the idea in the uh, in the movies that he'd made quite a lot of suits by Iron Man three. But you know, it'd be kind of interesting to see how many variants appeared in the comic books. Uh, fix me, brain drain. I'm assuming this is Dr. Octavius, Dr. Octopus. Uh, personal history between Iron Man and Dr. Octopus. Yes, it is. Um, I do remember in the comics he had green glasses, green, green lenses. That always sort of, that stuck in my mind, hence, uh, hence the reason. I, uh, that's what I suspected it was. So I've got some Doc, Doc Ock related stuff going on there. Uh, showing the bit that we've built so far and the chest plate and how it will all fit. Very good. Dark Avengers, Norman Osborn's Insanity. Hmm. Interesting. Captain Marvel, Sentry Miss Marvel, Ares, Wolverine, Hawkeye and the amazing Spider-Man in a symbiote type. Costume. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. And is this Captain America, or is this an Iron Man, or is this... Uh, oh, right. Oh, no, this is Norman Osborn's um, variant of the Iron Man type suit, I'm assuming, is it? Right, oh, cool artwork. I like the artwork, but, uh, yeah, interesting. Mutant Utopia... Crop top armor. 
the ghost of Tony Stark. Tony Stark's constant experimentation on his own body has taken its toll. Now, after several memory wipes and multiple genetic adjustments, he is resurrected once more, but this new incarnation is not all that it seems. All right. Hmm. So that uh, concludes this one, which is 71, 72, 73, and 74. We have got two more to get through um, to get us up to speed, uh, but that's where we're at just now. So um, thank you for watching this one. If you enjoyed this, as ever, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, ask a question, uh, give us a um, thoughts, comments, anything along those lines I will try and answer uh, anything that you have to ask unless it's comic book related which I will be absolutely hopeless at but thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video